Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news this Friday evening, so let's begin. First up, part of Nashua neighborhood evacuated during standoff. Utilities shut off to home on Chestnut Street. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. Well, Tina and Mike, right now we're standing at the intersection of Lake and Chestnut Street. You can see a heavy police presence here down Chestnut Street right now. There are SWAT teams focusing on a home. They've been there for hours, and we're not going to show that to you live right now just for the safety of those officers. But take a look at some video from earlier. You can see those SWAT teams entering the area that has been roped off. Elm Street Middle School just around the corner here. Buses were dismissed as usual, but parents are having to pick up their kids if they usually walk home from school. Neighbors tell us they first noticed a police presence around 12:30 this afternoon they say officers knocked on their doors and told them that it was not safe and that they needed to evacuate i looked out the windows and saw all the cops on uh the other side of brook this side and then i looked down the street and there was more cops and more cops and i'm like what's going on i started freaking out i'm like oh my god because the swat truck had just pulled up and I'm like, oh my, this is serious. And they all had their guns pointed. They had the big guns out. So this entire side of Chestnut Street on the opposite side of Elm Street continues to be shut down at this hour. Neighbors tell us that when they were told to evacuate, they were told about some kind of threat having to do with an explosion. Now, police have not been able to confirm any of that to us at this point, but the fire department is here on standby as well as a utility company. So we will continue to follow this developing story and bring you updates as we get it. That's the live here in Nashua. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on. That video and that report. Sites across state ready to collect unwanted prescription drugs. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. We're in the throes of the worst drug crisis we've ever seen. And one of the answers, according to officials, is drug take-back day. What we're trying to do is we're trying to prevent anybody from going into a medicine cabinet and getting their hands on a prescription medication that somebody may not be using or it's expired. Officials say removing those drugs can help keep the problem from getting worse. We know, sadly, that too many people are experimenting with drugs for the first time that they find in their own home. An important part of the program is that those dropping off the drugs are guaranteed anonymity. We'll take anything that people have laying around the house. It's no questions asked. We're not going to look through it to determine whether or not it's uh, an allergy medication or, or an Oxycontin. We just want to get it out of harm's way. Two things that are not being collected are liquids or syringes. But in addition to medication for the first time, vaping devices are included. Manchester's police chief says vaping is becoming a major concern in the city. We recently had a shooting on the west side of Manchester that included a robbery, and that was over vaping products. In the past, officials have collected between 12 and 15,000 pounds of unwanted drugs in New Hampshire during these events. And the DEA says this does represent something positive when it comes to the drug epidemic. The good news is the response, and New Hampshire's the gold standard for the response. We have turned Drug Take Back Day into a statewide community event where everybody wants to participate. Officials say they're often asked by people what they can do when it comes to helping fight the drug crisis. Well, they say this is one way everyone can participate. You can find a complete list of drop-off locations on our website, WMUR.com. Reporting live in Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
Buttigieg hopes to build momentum in latest New Hampshire trip. Democratic presidential candidate stakes out more moderate territory on health care. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. His campaign visit to New Hampshire is centered around women's economic empowerment. But Pete Buttigieg is also making a statement with his crowds. Well, what we're seeing right now is a terrific sign of momentum that tells us that our message is landing. And you can tell that uh, the same folks who I might have seen six months ago just out of curiosity are now here to make a decision about who to support. The South Bend mayor is staking out more moderate territory in the 2020 race with his plan for a public insurance option on health care standing in contrast to progressives calling for Medicare for all. Certainly there are a lot of questions around the math of it. What I know is that our plan is fully paid for and our plan has the advantage that it doesn't kick you off of your private plan. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with News 9, the candidate hinted that the more pugnacious Mayor Pete the country saw in the last debate stage could be sticking around. I like to think I'm, I'm pretty low-key and easygoing, but uh, I can also get fired up about some of these uh, issues because, uh, you know, our country is on the line, uh, my generation's future is on the line, and I think every American has so much of a stake in what's going on. I think that there are some candidates that are leading right now that are a little out of touch, and I think Pete is a bit closer to being more in touch with the voters. Mayor Buttigieg may have a natural rapport with younger voters, but right now his biggest challenge is to win over moderates who might be having second thoughts about who they support in this race. My only concern is can he beat Trump? So that's my biggest thing. Otherwise, I, he would be number one on my list. In Durham, Adam Sexton, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Twenty twenty candidate Bennett calls on Democrats to support moderate voice. Presidential candidate speaks at Politics Eggs event. If you want to see that full video, we will have a link for you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. Ted Cruz in New Hampshire predicts Trump will be impeached by House Democrats, acquainted by Senate Republicans. Conservative Texas Senator helps raise money for ally, U.S. Senate candidate O'Brien. Colin Vulture would have feds help state provide tuition-free community college degrees. Minnesota Senator would also increase eligibility limit for Pella grants as part of her higher education plan. And now let's take a look at that U.S. stock market and see how your U.S. stock market closed for this Friday evening. And here's a look at that U.S. stock market for all of you for this Friday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. Your NASDAQ closed in the green and went up. S&P 500 closed in the green and went up. Gold closed in the green and went up. Oil closed in the green and went up. U.S. 10-year closed in the green and went up. Your slash USD closed in the red and went down. And VIX closed in the red and went down. S&P 500 rises on earnings and trade optimism filters with record high to end the week. Stocks rose on Friday as investors cheered strong quarterly earnings from internal along with appropriate progressive on the U.S.-China trade front. Actress Felicity Hoffman out of prison early after sentence to spend 14 days in college admission scandal. Actress Felicity Hoffman was released Friday morning from a federal prison in California on the 11th day of a 14-day sentence for her role in the college scandal, authorities said. The Desperate Housewives star was released from the low security prison for women on Friday morning because under prison policy, inmates scheduled for weekend release are let 
out on Friday, the U.S. Bureau of Prisons said. And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and bye, everyone.